up guys welcome to my channel my name is franca and i'm glad you're here today we are going to be reading the infamous it ends with us and the prequel or sequel or whatever i don't really know what it's about so i can't tell you it starts with us by colleen hoover and you're probably wondering franca what about all the other books on your shelf that you have purchased before this book those are on the back burner because all the drama with it ends with us is making me want to read this book the drama is between blake lively and justin baldoni i think that's how you say his last name so apparently blake lively is marketing this movie as a romance love triangle like get your girlies watch this like cute romance movie right justin is marketing this book as a dv book that is supposed to show like that dark side of relationships like dv and stuff like that i'm gonna read it in the car while me and my mom go on a road trip and i'll be back with some thoughts I've read about like 180-ish pages so far and I have some thoughts. So the first thing is on the front of the cover it says every person with a heartbeat should read this and I feel like that is setting the book up for failure because it makes it sound like this book is so amazing so good. I think the book should have ended with the first chapter to be honest. I hate it so far at least. I read the first page of this book and I was like why is is this giving Wattpad? I think this book might have been on Wattpad to begin with and I feel like Wattpad, I feel like I've mentioned this before in some of my videos, but Wattpad has different like categories. You have like the actual good writers, you have like the it's all right could be better writers and then you have like just teenage girls who are writing like whatever they want and it's not the best and sometimes it's not even just teenage girls but that's what i'm going to classify it as this feels like it is written by a teenage girl who is writing her first book just the way it is written i feel like it's supposed to be a ya novel but also why is it a ya novel with that premise but i can see why blake would like market it as a love triangle because most of the time it feels like it's just a love triangle or at least so far it just feels like a love triangle i thought lily was supposed to be a dv victim but i am on like 180 pages in and they have not mentioned lily being a dv victim at all so i'm confused as to why nothing has happened you know what i mean like if you have a book about dv you kind of want to mention dv you know what i mean and maybe it just hasn't happened yet the only dv that is mentioned is her mom's like that's the only part of dv but then the way lily talks about it is literally victim blaming and like being so hateful towards her mom who is literally like a victim of dv so i don't i don't know i hate lily as a character so <laughs> on page 10 let me get the, the quote lily goes that's because I don't live here. And she points to a faraway building. Mind you, she's on the rooftop of this building where she meets Ryle. And she goes, I live in that building. And she like points to it or whatever. So then he goes, if you live over there, why are you here? Your boyfriend live here or something? And then Lily's thoughts <laughs> are, his comment somehow makes me feel cheap. It was too easy. An amateurish pickup line. From the looks of this guy, I know he has better skills than that. It makes me think he saves the more difficult pickup lines for women he deems worthy. Girl, why are you like mad at him about a pickup line when he has like a genuine question? You are literally trespassing. You just told him, this isn't my building. I don't live here. And you were on the rooftop of this building, which mind you, probably has private access because I don't know what apartment building lets you go on like their patio for freezies unless maybe they have like a restaurant up there. So this girl is literally trespassing and then she makes Ryle out to be the bad guy because he asked her if her boyfriend lives here. So I thought that was weird because like it just threw me for a loop because I was reading and I was like, oh, like this is fine, like whatever. And then I don't know, Colleen just seems to like put in her opinion or like Lily's opinion, whatever, 
like and then it just makes you rethink the character because you're like no she literally in the wrong like why is she saying this like i'm supposed to be rooting for her like she's doing something good when she did something completely awful also like i mentioned lily has no care about dv until it happens to her she's talking about her mom's dv which I can't even begin to fathom how Colleen could put this in a book about DV when you're supposed to like like the main character and it's the main character who's thinking these things and saying these things. When I was a kid, I found myself looking forward to the nights they would fight because I knew if he hit her, the two weeks that followed would be great. That's crazy. She's like very judgmental about her mom. At one point, she was even like, I think I like her more now that my dad's passed away. Like she's fine now. Obviously, it's bad that Lily has gone through dv with her partner whatever but also i think i don't feel as much remorse as i should because i'm li like lily why are you making those comments and then when it happens to you you're like i don't know why people don't believe women and they're like why don't they leave but i guess maybe that's the point but it just it just irks me a little bit because i'm sitting here reading and i'm like Lily, you are so mean to your mom. Like, you are thinking the same things that you're saying other people think about you. And I'm like, I don't know. It was wild to me. Side note, she wrote diaries to Ellen DeGeneres. And I hate how, like, every main character in romance books has to be quirky. Oh my god, I'm not like other girls. I don't just write diaries to my future self. I write diaries to Ellen DeGeneres. There was one point where she was like, there's free beer if you use a onesie. And me and Ryle's sister were the only girls there. That's so weird. It's giving pick me. Also, side note, I also hate the way women are portrayed in half of these books. Because especially like Lily's character is portrayed as some girl boss. I did this all by myself. I can do anything I put my mind to. So tell me why everyone is helping her along the way. Hey, she's not asking for help and when i tell you there is nothing wrong with needing help there's nothing wrong with asking for help she doesn't ask for help she's like no i don't need help no i don't need and these characters persistently help her an hour into buying not even a day an hour into buying this flower shop some random girl walks in the store and is like oh are you hiring i saw an old hiring sign like i'm rich i'm bored i have nothing to do with my time and then mind you that day lily happens to sprain her ankle and they didn't do that much right? So then obviously that girl is obviously Ryle's sister because like how could it not be? And then Ryle tells her like you have to take a week off like you can't do anything in here. Tell me why Lily takes a week off and Alyssa, Ryle's sister, cleans up and like changes things. Tell me why when she comes back, oh my god this place looks nothing like it used to. This is exactly what I envisioned even though I did not lift a single finger to do anything to help and I just have a whole bunch of side characters that are helping me along the way. I hate to say this but Akatar, even in Akatar, when when Feyre is like bad at like doing going through amp hammerance whatever the heck her name is trials or whatever Rysand and Lucian were helping her with every challenge like this girl didn't do anything by herself and then everyone's like oh my god like you saved us like it was just you meanwhile behind the scenes everyone's helping her and it just annoys me because like why are you gonna make these female leads seem like a girl boss they can do whatever they want write them in a way that completely contradicts your girl boss I don't know if that makes sense but I've noticed that in so many books with female leads and I feel like it's probably used to like move the story along or whatever whatever but like it irks me also tell me why <laughs> this girl lily also her name lily bloom lily blossom bloom sorry absolutely awful could you not have been more creative <laughs> or like given effort because she even mentions it in the book like i have the worst name for a flower shop like people aren't gonna take me seriously no one's gonna take you seriously because colleen picked that name for you like she could have picked anything so obviously lily wants to run this stupid flower shop tell me why this woman is a business major right she majors in business so she buys a flower shop and tell me why she tells Alyssa, i want a flower shop that caters towards people who hate flowers i'm not the brightest i didn't major in business but i'm pretty sure people who hate flowers don't go to flower shops creating a flower shop that ca caters towards people who hate flowers is a stupid idea Alyssa was like there's none like that and lily's like exactly that's what i'm gonna do also tell me why 
Lily finds the most awful things funny. She was reading one of her diaries and she was like, oh, Atlas told me he couldn't watch TV because he didn't have any electricity, which is a given. He's homeless. He's living in a like rundown house. Like, of course, there's no freaking electricity. And she laughs at him. And then she goes, ha 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 ha, I probably shouldn't be laughing about this, but I can't help it. But also, Atlas is portrayed in this book as the perfect guy whatever like he comes in and he swoops her off her feet and he's just absolutely perfect but tell me why when he first met her he was 18 and he had the audacity to ask her when do you turn 16 anybody asking you about your age like that in context when they're hanging out with you just randomly out of the blue is the biggest freaking red flag ever. So tell me how he's supposed to be the great character and he's saying that kind of shit. Okay, so I finished the book and I don't have that many more thoughts because this was probably one of the most boring books ever. So we learn why Alyssa, Ryle's sister, and her husband Marshall, who's supposedly Ryle's best friend, because obviously, met. And it's supposed to be this meet cute. And it just sounds like Alyssa threw a tantrum and she was having her main character moment and she got upset and she cried and she like yelled at him he was literally kissing another girl and she had like this major tantrum and that's supposed to be a meet cute also a side note why are all the book boyfriends rich ryle's a neurosurgeon so obviously he's got money and marshall is like a multi-millionaire i feel like in books you don't have a middle ground like no one's like middle class it's either you're really poor or you're really rich but yeah that was the thought <laughs> if all the book boyfriends are rich why does that not translate into real life why are not all the guys rich in real life Life. Also, tell me how Alyssa and Lily are best friends in acting like they've known each other their entire life after they've met like five times. Obviously, I think it's important to write books about TV and things like that, but I think there is a way you should and shouldn't handle it, especially if you're talking about like a very sensitive topic. Most of the cast, other than Justin, is marketing this book as a love triangle. But I can see why, because even Colleen Hoover has this book in the romance aisle which i don't know what aisle a book about dv should be in but i'm pretty sure it's not romance i'm gonna give this book a one star it gives me the summer i turned pretty vibes where like i just hate the main character like with that said we're gonna start reading it starts with us so i have no idea what the heck this book is about all i know is it like it's like the prequel sequel it goes with this one i know i didn't like this book that much but the cover is so pretty even this one is really pretty and i'll see you guys in a bit when i have some thoughts i'm starting to think maybe i'm just like not a romance reader i guess this book is supposed to be lily and atlas's like romance or whatever the dory stuff is still a thing i think colleen hoover is overusing it in this book because if i see just keep swimming one more time i think i'm gonna lose my shit especially the ellen diaries is just to tell you the past that's like their sole purpose i've read about a hundred ish pages and if you see me looking over to the side over here it's because i wrote no i don't really think i personally like Colleen Hoover's writing just because it feels like something I would read on Wattpad. But one thing I noticed in her writing, which like if you've ever taken an English class at any point in your life, one of the main things they tell you is show, don't tell. But one thing I noticed is she tells. But also tell me why. One sentence started with he's probably wondering and then the sentence right after that is he's also probably wondering. Like you couldn't have found a different way to start that sentence. I just finished the last 100 pages. As much as I've already said it, I don't care about this book. I'm going to rate it i don't remember what i rated it i think it was a one or two star let me double check i give it a one star i don't even know what to tell you about this book other than literally the last sentence of this book but the literal last sentence of this book is p.s it is my wish for you to be my fish and i might spoil it a little bit but honestly you could see it coming from a mile away that is at the end of his wedding vows. If any man had the audacity to tell me that on my wedding day as his wedding vows, instant annulment. And uh, I have nothing else to say. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and a comment down below. If you didn't, feel free to leave a hate comment. I'd love to hear your opinion and I will see you guys tomorrow.